2024 is going to be the biggest year of gacha gaming that I don't think any of us were ready for. I know a lot of us like to kind of keep up with what games are coming in the future, and there's been some interesting games here and there that's gotten a little bit of attention with a couple of standouts like Wuthering Waves, but there still hasn't really been any major shifts in the market for a long time. It's been pretty defined by Genshin since it released, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but let's be real, Genshin changed the game. Genshin turned gacha games from a peripheral kind of fringe mobile gaming experience into the broader market. It broke the normie barrier and it has the player cap to prove it and the revenue to prove it. And for a long time, a lot of people thought Genshin was completely untouchable. We like to throw around terms like Genshin Killer all the time, but let's be real, I don't think anybody ever believed Tower of Fantasy was actually going to kill Genshin when people were using that term. When Genshin Impact first hit the market in 2020, I don't think anybody was expecting the success that it got. And I think that counts for other developers as well, because no one else seemed to have anything even close to Genshin when it came out. Now we know that Genshin got the COVID boost. A lot of people were locked up at home, they needed something to sink their time into, and this new free opportunity just came in that people started to explore. And it had this great nostalgia and feeling of Breath of the Wild with a good cast of characters, and a lot of people were hooked. They needed a nice comfort game, and Genshin met that. And let's be real, it's been really popular since, but I think a lot of game developers have taken notice, and we are now going to be entering into the era where the other developers who are trying to build real competition are coming into the market. And I think it's really exciting and crazy to see. And that's why I think 2024 is going to be bigger than any year before it. If you keep up with the gacha space at all, you'll know that the recent long form gameplay trailer for Azure Pramila just dropped and it blew everybody away. I think only the fringest of the fringe in the community realized that the game was actually coming if you've been tracking publishing licenses and other little filings and details, but most of us had zero idea that the developers of Azure Lane were going to be dropping this insane open world experience that looks like a great blend between Genshin Impact or open world anime exploration games and pal world it looks fantastic and if it can deliver on anything like we've seen in the long form gameplay trailer it is going to shake things up massively and now i know there is a chance that a lot of that could have been manufactured and fake but i think based on what i saw from that trailer it seems to be fairly far along in the process it's not like a pre-rendered sequence that you can fake and use as like a gameplay trailer there's way more to that gameplay than we've seen and it could also again be a tall vertical slice and maybe there's more work to be done but based on some of the other licensing information that's just dropped it's expected to have a late 2024 release which is crazy to see another juggernaut now going to be entering into the market. We all already know that Wuthering Waves is going to be coming later this year, which we're all very excited for. While we're still waiting on a confirmed date, a lot of people are still expecting it definitely at the latest, like sometime this fall, barring any kind of major updates from the developer. But that is another game that is going to come in and directly compete. I know a lot of people had a lot of mixed reactions on Ark Knight's Enfield. They weren't totally sold on the combat, but that is another game that based on the beta testing that we've seen is very far along in its development process and coming from the studio that created the original Ark Knights that has a massive fan base behind it, it is definitely going to have a lot of success as well. And then a final game that a lot of people have been giving a lot of attention to is Project Mugen. Now Project Mugen, based on the recent developer interview, probably isn't going to have any major release this year of 2024, but probably sometime early in 2025. But this is another game that has a almost Spider-Man insomniac-like inspiration in terms of the world traversal, but awesome characters that a lot of people are sold on. In their recent developer interview, they plan on taking on a release cycle similar to that of Genshin, where they're going to be releasing new cities every year, like they're releasing new regions in Genshin. And then another game that has been building a lot of steam is Duet Night Abyss, which is another anime-styled game that's kind of like a cross between Genshin and Warframe. Now, a lot of people don't like the comparison to Genshin, but this is my point. I think a lot of these games are taking inspiration from Genshin and what it has established, but now branching it out into their own creations. So Genshin, like I don't think is an unfair term. While Duet Night Abyss is not exactly 
open world in the same way that Arknights Enfield is not going to be open world either. They're kind of more like semi open world with instant zones. You're still going to get that exploration like experience. Not everybody wants to have a 100% completely open world all the time as it can be a little bit exhausting, especially if you want to play more than one game. Some people like it being a little bit scaled down, but having some degree of freedom in there, which it seems like at least Arknights Enfield is going to meet that. But Duet Night Abyss again is going to be more of like an instance dungeon like experience. But I think a lot of people are going to like that. But as it stands right now, a lot of these games are shaping up to be market shifting games. I think the grip that we've seen Genshin have on the gacha market is actually starting to slip. The more that there are a variety of games that cater to more specific audiences that have the degree of quality and combat that Genshin had but didn't fully deliver on, I think is going to affect people more and more. Now, of course, of course, before you leave a stupid freaking comment, of course, you could play both. There's a lot of people that probably will. They'll probably still keep up with Genshin. They'll keep up with the story, maybe get the new characters as well as taking on some of these other games because most people are playing at least more than one gacha game because they're all designed to be side games. So if you have enough side games, it's like having one real main game. <laughs> Such is the plight of gotcha players, I guess. So don't misunderstand me and say that I, I think Genshin is going to die. I'm not saying Genshin is going to die. I do think it has reached a critical mass that it's like kind of like a World of Warcraft at this point that I think it's just going to kind of continue to lumber along in and of itself and as it is. And then these other games are going to sprout up and start to build more of their own fan bases. And I think we're going to start to see a little bit of a dilution of kind of market control. But of course, it's still going to be there. I personally am very excited to see these new games come into the market. I think all the ones that I've brought up, I've actually, I'm legitimately excited for. Now, we've all got a little bit of a grass is greener effect going on right now because all of the games that I have mentioned, none of them have officially released yet. We haven't actually seen to what extent these games are going to launch as and what experiences they're going to offer us as players. So we can kind of dream and fantasize about the experience of these games a lot and think they are going to be the best games, but until the game actually launch and they are delivered from these gaming companies let's always make sure we're taking everything with a grain of salt but taking all of those things into account taking into account the state of the market these games that are coming and the years since that it's been from Genshin and we're kind of entering into this new era I'm still very excited I'm very excited for these games that are going to be coming down the line of course I'll here on this main channel I'm definitely going to be covering Wuthering Waves as well as PGR that's what we do here but we are going to be looking to cover some of these other games as they come out as well so make sure you're subscribed and you can check those games out in the future but i know i'm very excited for them let me know what do you guys think is the most anticipated game of the five that i've mentioned so far wuthering waves azure pramila duet night abyss project mugen or arc knights enfield which are you most excited for that's coming down the line now some of you may be wondering connor why didn't you mention zenless zone zero because zenless zone zero is kind of like a weird extension of the kind of like star rail genshin amorphous blob where Hoyo versus plan is they want you to kind of play all of their games so it's it's not quite in the same bracket or one-to-one -one competitor that it is with these other games I, at least I don't personally see it that way the nature of the game and how it's set up in its instance combat the other TV mechanics and things that they're incorporating don't exactly cross over for me so Zen the Zone Zero I'm kind of seeing in a different category in and of itself something more comparable to competition with PGR or again against another Hoyo verse game with like Honkai Impact, but I don't see it as being a competition for Duet Night Abyss or Azure Pramila, for example. All in all, I'm still very excited about the future of this genre. I think this is a genre that has been really harped on by a lot of people, and I think it's something that still has a lot of potential for the future. So like I said, which game are you most excited for in the future? And let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.